Hi guys, my name is Grover and I'm the CEO and founder of Verve Digital. At Verve, we build innovative digital learning for corporates. Please go and like our new channel on YouTube um, and you can like and subscribe. There's obviously no content as yet. This is the first bit of content that we're going to be creating. So please turn on notifications and you'll be notified as soon as any content has been uploaded. So today I'm going to be talking about why I prefer Lectora to articulate and captivate. So just a bit of a disclaimer. Firstly, um, this is a preference video. So it's basically why I prefer it. It's not necessarily anything in terms of the features that, I, that you know, a whole lot of people have said are better than the other programs are not. Um, I actually use Articulate on a daily basis, building content for clients. Um, in most cases because they, um, they want the source files and they need the source files and they should have the source files um, after we're done with it. Um, so it's definitely no stabs at the other tools, it's just my preference. The second reason is because I am a developer, um, so it's more for, for developers this video. And I believe it's easy to, easier to use um, from a development perspective. And it's basically my opinion. The third thing is I, I learned how to build e-learning um, on Lectora when I started my journey um, in 2008. So, you know, just take those three things into account when you're watching this video. I definitely don't have any problems with Articulate or Captivate. I just believe that um, from my perspective, um, I really like Lectora because I believe it's easier to, to work with as a developer. So firstly, what is, what is Lectora? Lectora is an authoring tool um, and it um, was initially owned by a company called Trevantis. Um, and last year, a company by the name of eLearning Brothers um, acquired them. Um, so they acquired not just Lectora, they acquired all of the other tools that they have. They have um, Scenario VR, which I'll touch on very briefly later on in the session as well. Um, obviously, they've got Lectora as well. Um, they sell off-the-shelf courses, which obviously integrates with um, the learning experience system, which is the last thing that they've also acquired, which at the moment is known as KnowledgeLink, um, but he's changing the name to Rockstar um, LMS. But uh, it is a learning experience system, as I explained. But eLearning Brothers has been around for many, many years, um, and they've, they've, they were the leader, basically, in asset libraries, off-the-shelf training as well. Um, so when we talk about asset libraries, we talk about templates for Lectora, for Articulate and Captivate as well, you know, as, as, as the other um, authoring tools. Um, but obviously, um, they, they found a lot of value with, with uh, all the Trevantis tools, and they decided um, that they were going to acquire them. So at the moment, or, or currently, eLearning Brothers now owns Lectora. So let's jump straight into it. I'm going to open up Lectora, and I'm going to take you through um, the five reasons why I prefer Lectora over Articulate and Captivate. Okay. Before we get into that, the first thing I want to talk about is, is, is um, the one reason I don't like Lectora. Um, and that is because of the interface. It's not as easy to sort of understand. Um, it's, it's difficult to train as well when I'm sort of training new people to, to learn how to use it. Um, and that's very simply because Articulate and Captivate have used PowerPoint um, as their base in order to, um, you know, to, to, to build e-learning. Um, and because people are so used to the interface of, of PowerPoint, um, you know, they, they grasp it a lot quicker. But Lectora's interface is also a bit dated um, and obviously is, is um, due for a revamp. Um, but I, I do know that they are um, busy with that at the moment. I think they're actually going through testing at the moment. I'm part of the Lectora early adoption program, so obviously I've got a little bit of access to that, and I won't be talking about any of that stuff until, until it's released. Um, but the interface is definitely something that I know they're working very hard on to, um, you know, to, to upgrade and make it look, look a lot better. But um, from there we jump straight into the reasons that I do like Lectora. Okay. And the first thing um, that I want to sort of bring to your attention is this title explorer here that's on the left hand side. Um, now what you'll see firstly is it's um, broken down into um, these sort of levels. So if I open up this for example, um, the layouts, um, and I open up this which you have at the bottom which is, which is a section, you'll see that there's a title which is basically your, um, if you have to, to think about it in terms of building something in your, um, you know, in a Word document for example, that's kind of your program. Um, and then you'll have your chapter 
which is probably similar to, to what you do in, in real learning. Um, and then you'll have a section and then you'll have your page. So it basically works in a hierarchy format. But what I really like about it, um, just very briefly, is the fact that if I open any of these pages, I can immediately see all of these objects, you know, on my, um, on my page. You know, as I click on it, you can see it's highlighting them. So if I click on the page title, for example, it's, going, it's there on the top. Right, so so you can easily just see that instead of what um, uh, what uh, articulate and captivate have is this thing at the bottom um, here at the bottom of the, the screen, which is called the timeline. They they went that route, um, and if you drag that all the way up to see all of your objects, obviously your page um, you know gets very very small. And you can't see it on the actual page. So I like the sort of the fact that they're putting it on this side, and you can basically just see. Um, everything with your actual um, you know the development on your on, on in the middle of your screen you know you can see everything here as well um, so to me that, that that's uh, um, very important for me as a developer to pick up exactly where things are on my page without needing to scroll up and uh, you know just to, to to hide my timeline and bring it up etc um, but lots of times you've got lo loads of these um, objects on your page you know um, and then you've got to obviously drag it all out, click on it, drag it down and have a look. And this is just a bit easier for me to use. Um, the second reason that I really like it is because these objects that are on this page um, work with inheritance, which I think is really cool as well. Okay, so um, I'll give you an example of exactly what I'm talking about. If you look here on the top of the title, you have all of these things on the top where this is tags, so basically just the fonts that they have in there as well. There's theme elements like the background, which is that black piece there, the logo, um, the course title text, which is obviously the whole course title. Um, you've got other background elements here, the texture, the color, um, the, the, sorry, the header. Um, there's this little thing that they put in here as well. Um, and then navigation at the bottom, which is obviously your, your next and back buttons. But because it's put here on the top of the title, any chapter or any section, and obviously any page as well that you have below that, it automatically gets inherited into okay um, and I know that you're thinking that you know um, articulate and captivate have that as well and they do they use um, slide master which is obviously something that's that, that most people are familiar with when, when you are working with PowerPoint um, the, the problem that I have with that is is that it's not just here you've got to go into the slide master and then edit those those layouts there um, and they're obviously individual slides as well that you need to pull in Whereas, yeah, it's just here on the top. You can inherit or uninherit it based on what you uh, what you need on that slide or what you need in that section, etc., etc. So I'm just going to quickly show you what I mean there. For example, if I click on comparison, all of these elements here are inherited from the actual title, right? This is not because obviously not all of the pages. If I look on welcome, for example, you know this this changes. It goes into a different position. Um, but if I go into onto comparison, for example, this title um, is not really unique only to this page, it's unique to these pages here as well. Well, not unique at all, in fact. Um, so I can put it on the top, just in that section, without needing to go into each of these pages and put it in there, okay? And you can do the same thing, um, you know, when you're busy with, uh, with Slide Master, but you've got to actually right-click and, and, and pull that in. Whereas here, you've actually got a structure that you can see on the side and just, you know, update it from there. And obviously, you're never going to get away from the fact that you're always going to have objects on your page. Um, because that makes it um, unique to that page. But all the stuff that's not unique, you want to pull in from the top. Um, so inheritance is a big feature for me. Um, and let's just say, for example, you don't want to, to inherit these next and back buttons. Let's say you want to put a, another button on here to submit a, a, you know, a, a question or answer on this page. Um, all you need to do is click on that page. You just go to properties, click on inherit, and then you just take the navs obviously on the top here, um, which, is, which is for the title. Click on that and then you won't see it. It's not going to be available there. Obviously, we, we do want it there, so I'm going to undo that. If you want to put it back in, obviously just click on this, click on the actual object and pull it back in and then it'll inherit it from there. Um, also, what's also pretty cool is if you don't want to inherit anything from the master, from the from parents, you just click on, you want to inherit all, all objects, no objects or specific. So obviously specific is what I chose so that I could you know make some changes there. But obviously in this case we're going to inherit all, so that's fine. So we're just going to close that. Okay, so that's the second reason. So there's objects, there's inheritance. The third reason is that um, Lectora is really responsive. And when I say it's, it's, it's really responsive, 
Um, what I mean is when you when you look on the top there, you'll see it's obviously got these um, selections on the top to show you exactly what it's going to look like as you're developing your course. Um, the uh, defaults to desktop, what it looks like on your actual PC or laptop or, or your desktop. Um, but you are able to to see, you know, in in what orient this is obviously a portrait for your for um, a a tablet. You'll be able to see exactly what happens. Now you'll see what happened there is it didn't just make the screen smaller, right? If I click there, it actually moved the objects on the page without me doing anything. Um, and if I click on the phone, it does the same. It didn't really move much from uh, from the the tablet because it just made it a bit smaller, but it has shifted some of the content slightly. Right, um, so it's, it's very easy to develop um, based on the fact that you're just working on this uh, from a desktop perspective. Um, but you know, you can easily just click on them to have a look at it. Now, this is not the same, for example, in a program like Articulate. Articulate just simply makes your screen smaller, right? And we all know that Articulate um, uses Flash, and it uses an HTML5 wrapper to um, you know to manage the fact that Flash is no longer supported. Um, but basically all that does is it makes the screen smaller um, and it doesn't shift the content on the actual screen. Um, so to me that's a big difference um, because obviously you want it to be truly responsive so that people are able to still navigate on this. Now what you'll see on the side as well, there's obviously the landscape version as well. Here it's not, um, it hasn't been activated, I'm going to activate it now. And basically you'll see when you click on it, um, okay it looks very similar to the desktop but if I go to the phone, um, now it's going to, you know, do some some funky stuff where it goes over, um, you know, over the top of the heading and all that kind of stuff, and you don't want to do that. But basically, what you'd need to do is actually make some changes to the actual screen. Um, for example, pull that down. Um, what I would probably be doing here, for example, is um, in the, the the text side of things, I put a scroll bar in so that they're actually able to scroll um, because obviously this is going to go over it um, and just drop these down slightly as well. Um, so, so yeah, we, obviously th th that's basically what you would need to need to do if it's not um, automatically responsive in that side. But basically, once you start developing it, after you've activated them and you've moved your objects on your screen, um, it will automatically be, be responsive and then it'll shift the stuff around the way you want it to. Okay, the third, the fourth thing, sorry, is um, is something that we call um, scenario VR, and this is, I feel, at the moment, um, as far as I'm aware, unique to Lectora. Scenario VR is a VR uh, tool um, that that uh, we use to build virtual reality content in. I'm going to show you an ex an example of one. Um, this is, a, a, for example, a scenario a VR course that was built. But basically, you are able to pull this kind of content, which is very interactive. You know, as you can see, you can use it on your phone, you can use it on your um, headsets, you can use it on your PC as well as I'm doing now. Um, but it's it's obviously a lot more interactive. Um, so, you know, it obviously gives you, and these are all staged. So this is not real, for example. Um, um, if there are only people that are uh, a bit of squeamish, this is obviously just uh, these are actors that are in this actual um, the scenario. Um, but it gives a good sort of sense for, for example, in this case, safety training. Um, you know, it gives you good, um, a good, it immerses you in the actual situation as well, which is pretty nice. Um, and this is very nice when you're using kind of um, your, your headsets as well. But as you can see on on my PC, I am, you know, I'm, I'm able to, um, you know, click on 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 these things and, and, and navigate it pretty easily. It's not that difficult either. Okay. So, to, and obviously you can have assessments and that kind of stuff. But this stuff you can integrate um, by clicking on here, you can actually pull in a scenario um, file. So what I would do is I'd publish it from there and then pull it in here. Um, and um, you know, you could have it on your actual lectoral file. So you could have, you know, a whole course going through a whole lot of other stuff and then you, you jump into the scenario of your um, um, little, you know, snippet of the course, which, which I think is really cool as well. Um, so for me, that that's pretty much a game changer, especially um, in our country in South Africa. Um, safety is, is is a massive thing, you know, with with our minds and um, you know in shops and in in, um, in um, industrial sections as well, like um, you know logistics environment, etc. So so it's it's pretty much a game changer. And what's really cool about it is the fact that it's it's not going to cost an arm and a leg. Um, 
to build stuff in Scenario VR, it's exactly the same. We use the ca same kind of, um, you know, tools that we use in Lectora. Um, you know, we could use the same variables, same actions, um, et cetera, et cetera, in there. Um, so it's not completely alien to us as e-learning developers. Um, you know, so it's, it's making it a lot more um, cost effective for companies to, um, to, to, to build, to, for, for companies to pay um, companies like us to build stuff like that or for them to build it themselves. You know, it's not that difficult. And the last thing, the last reason I like um, Lectora is, is how it's published. So Lectora is published um, in HTML5, it always has been that way um, uh, as well. It was in HTML before HTML5 existed. But it's always been an HTML um, sort of, uh, it's always been published to HTML. Whereas Captivate and Articulate um, published to Flash. Um, and obviously we know the whole, all the issues that are happening now with, um, with Flash being dead and no, no support being offered by Adobe anymore. Um, so, you know, that's sort of my main reason for wanting to use this, knowing that this is pretty much um, bulletproof. It's not going to change in, in the future. Whereas if you've got Articulate 2, for example, now, um, you know, you can't preview stuff in Articulate. Um, you can still publish because you can publish to HTML5. It puts a wrapper around the, the, flash, the flash content. Um, but um, to me, it's just, it's just a bit more bulletproof. Um, so, yeah, guys, that's, that's my, my quick video. Um, and just a couple of preferences of why I, I personally like, prefer Lectora over Articulate and Captivate. Um, and if you agree with me, please put some comments down in the in the comment section in the bottom. And if you don't agree with me, put, put the comments there as well. 